Hey everyone, welcome back to Catching Up with the Walkers. And today is the day we announce the big winners. So the winners of our Veterans Day giveaway, instead of one, we actually picked two. Uh, we did Who have- had a bonus of three. Yes, and we ended up doing three because one of the winners that was picked actually had a husband and a wife that both served. So we thought they both deserved a, um, some merchandise. Yes. Um, you also said you had someone who volunteered to pay for one yeah, if for we one wanted to give more, which they don't, they don't have to, but we thought that was very nice of you. So um, Liddell Cassidy and her husband both served 20 plus years in the Navy, I believe it was. Um, and so thank you so much for their service. I believe they also have kids who are um, in the armed forces and we truly appreciate that. Then our other lucky winner, Landed on Sam I Am. Sam I Am, congratulations. So you are also um, receiving one item from our merchandise store, a hoodie, a t-shirt, whatever it is that you want is what you got. Yeah, so uh, we're super excited that um, some awesome subs were ran randomly picked and there were so many of you that shared your story, said you served. We thank you so much for your service. Um, it's an, an honor for us to be able to give back and to say thank you. Um, it's just a little thing, but we wanted to do it. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for stopping by here at Catching Up with the Walkers. And as far as catching up, we'll get to that first. And then we'll get to how much our pigs really cost. So hopefully you guys enjoyed us getting our shipping container. We'll be making our very own freezer camp soon. So if you didn't see that on Walker Farm Fam, go check it out. I think you guys will enjoy the build that we do as we go along with that. And Cassie tracked down a pony the other day and we went and picked it up and that will be our very next video on Walker Farm Fam. And one of the reasons that Xena is losing her mind right now, there's another animal out there. We brought it back in the dark. Um, they are separated um, so they can get to know each other, but Xena's trying to figure out what's happening if you hear her barking. Yes, if you hear Xena barking, she's just doing her job. There's a new strange animal on the farm. Weird but smell. It's all okay. She will be just fine, I promise. But she's not very happy that somebody is new in the barnyard, more or less, and she's not happy about it. But she's separated. She can't get to uh, the new little pony, Lulu. I don't know if we've told them. You think you told a, them that? Some people asked um, if it was a mare or a gilding. It's a mare. Her name is Lulu. So the kids were super excited. But it's dark outside, so we'll get to it in the daylight. Yes. So we had a lot of work to do pr to prepare for our brand new pigs, hogs, whatever you want to call them that we got back from freezer camp. So we're going to show you right now getting prepared, getting our brand new freezer. And some of you, I think it was on this video, asked questions about the freezer. So I'm gonna go over the name of it, some of the features and stuff like that in a little more detail and see you getting it set up. And we brought our old freezer out here to the shop. Bye today. And if you're looking behind me, you probably notice two different freezers. So no, you're not seeing double. Today's the day that we're making the big switch over to our brand new freezer that I showed you guys a little while back that Lowe's delivered and we had a few issues with. But we've got the freezer now and this is a Medea 17 cubic foot freezer. And there are a few features on this one that's gonna make it better for inside our house than our other one. So I'm gonna show you the comparison between the Medea and the Kenmore 21 foot cubic foot freezer and I tell you why we're switching them over. Also, I'm going to head over here in a little bit. I don't know if Cassie's going or not with me. She's um, uh, getting ready right now, but I'm going to head over to pick up our um, fresh pork from freezer camp. And of course, we need somewhere to put it. So I'm going to get our old freezer defrosted, move it out to the shop, and get this new freezer filled up with meat. So let's take a quick look inside at the differences of the two. So right now I'm in the middle of transitioning our beef over to the new freezer, but I wanted to show you guys this Kenmore is about uh, probably 10 years old and it is a nice freezer. It does get um, a little bit of frost whenever the kids, what they'll do is come in here and get like a popsicle out and the door doesn't get shut back good. You can hear it shutting 
But if that door doesn't get shut back good, then it starts defrosting and you can see that um, it starts melting and it's not good. So how can we solve that problem? And you can see what happens to the shelves when that happens. So this has been a problem for a while. We actually had this freezer in our shop at our um, rent house while we were building the house that we're in right now. And the freezer door got left open and we lost probably a thousand dollars worth of fresh beef that we had processed not too long before that. So what I really wanted was a freezer that had an alarm and it has a high temperature alarm. So this new freezer we have, the Medea 17 cubic foot freezer has a high temperature alarm. If the temperature gets too high, it has an alarm that will warn you. And it also has an alarm if the door stays open. Um, in addition to that, it can be either a fridge or a freezer. So right now I've got it set to the freezer at seven degrees. And let's take a look inside this one. So this one has metal shelves um, that have these little squares in them. It's supposed to be um, anti-frost. I've already started filling it up with meat. But I gotta finish that. One other feature that I do like is it has keys so I can actually lock it up if I need to right here on the side so I'm hoping this freezer will solve the problem if the kids come in and grab a popsicle out or something like that it will let us know it will alert us that the doors open and we won't have the thawing issues and the same problems that we've had in the past so I'm really hoping it helps out but right now, we need to get everything transitioned over so we can get this freezer moved out to the shop. And once I get it out to the shop, I'm going to be putting a ratchet strap around it once I get it full of meat. That way I know it's gonna stay closed. So the only way I know that is to get, keep it locked shut, and that's what I plan on doing. So let's get this thing filled up so we can head over and pick up our fresh pork for the homestead. And I wanna to try to let you guys know how much it's costing us per pound for this pork. I'm talking the feed, the pork, the pigs itself, and the processing fees. So I'm gonna to try to get all that added up for you guys to tell you exactly what it's costing us. So just like that, we have one freezer that's empty, another one that is packed full. So busy day, I have to get this freezer out, get it defrosted, and Cassie and I have to go attend a funeral. A very dear friend of ours, her grandmother passed away. They have been people in our church that we've looked up to for years and years. So we're gonna go attend a funeral. And after that, later on today, towards the end of the day, I'll be going and getting the pork. So I'll catch up with you guys a little bit later. Hopefully we get this thing defrosted and then we can get it plugged back in in time to get some pork in it this afternoon. But I think this is gonna work out great. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. 
this new freezer is it the all of the um, answers to all of my questions will it solve my problem for the kids getting in leaving the door open I still want to put an emphasis on how important it is to shut the, the freezer door or the fridge door but but I've got a lot of stuff to do we'll catch up with you guys in just a little bit I had to take my hat off because I was getting hot unpacking that, but I finally got it out, out the door by myself. Cassie had to take off. I'm gonna meet up with her in a little bit, but we um, are gonna try to let this thing defrost. Hopefully in about two or three hours, it'll be ready to plug back in out in the shop and it'll be nice and defrosted. That sun, maybe we'll start hitting it and it'll go ahead and melt everything. So I feel like we're in really good shape now as far as our freezers are concerned. We have this freezer, that freezer, and we also have a small uh, chest type freezer in the shop as well. All the freezer capacity one family should need. But so I just made the long drive to Miami, Oklahoma, back at M&M Custom Butchering. They do a great job over here. I know I've said it before. When we get home, I'll show you guys a little bit of what we got made this time. But for now, I've got one, two, three ice chests behind me. I've got two more back in the back of the pickup. I'm picking up three of our pigs that we took over here. And number one is ours. Number two is our neighbors that um, has the house next to where our pigs stay at. And the third one is for my parents. So I'm going to get busy, get these guys loaded up, and I'll uh, show you what they look like inside the ice chest before we head home. So we got everything tightened down back there. All the ice chests are ready to go. And then we've got all of our meat right up here. I'm excited to get this home, get it in the freezer, and make sure it's nice and cold. And we'll be ready to eat some very soon. So hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing us get that meat brought home. I went and got it all delivered to the people it belongs to, our neighbors being one of them, my mom and dad. And then, of course, our freezer got filled up. So one of our favorite things, Cassie, is that we get from uh, m and Custom Processing is what? Our uh, cheddar brats. Cheddar brats. And we also last time tried boudin for the first time. So these are some of the bratwurst that we have ever had. They're <laughs> filled with... You said these are some of the bratwurst. See, these are some of the best bratwurst we've oh, ever had. <laughs> some of the best bratwurst we've ever had. These are filled with three different types of cheese. I think they have cheddar, pepper jack, and met one more. Amazingness. But they're really good, and we've ordered them a second time now. Because Dutch is the one who told us about them, so we gave him a try, and he was right. Yeah, keeping it Dutch was right for once. <laughs> I don't always trust him, but this time it, it actually did pay off. So, how much do you guys think that the pigs cost us per piece, a piece? I mean, I know you want me to tell them. No. Oh. So, we purchased five pigs, five um, little piglets. They were about 30 pounds when we got them? They were about 30 pounds. We paid $40 each for them. Um, and then we also had to buy 631 pounds or $631 worth of feed. So that's how much feed it took to feed out the five um, pigs. They ranged, in a, uh, most of them were in the 200 to 250 range. And if we, next time I think we'll go a little longer with the date and we'll try to get them all to that baseline of 250. So $631 worth of feed divided by five is $126. And then $40 um, extra for the pig itself equals $166 a piece average. So I would say that's a, for- Plus processing. Well, that's probably for an average of 220 pound pig. Then you take it to the processor and depending how you get it processed, if you want some of these cheesy brats, 
it's going to cost a little more. If you want um, like sausage patties made up, it's going to cost a little more. If you just want the normal processing, our, our neighbor did that more or less, a 258 um, pound I think was his, and he just did normal processing, what I consider, you know, your pork chops, your sausage, just your normal cuts, hams. Um, it was right at $202. So there's a that's bacon and everything. That's everything. That's um, curing the bacon, and so if you do the two hundred and two dollars plus one hundred and sixty-six dollars, you're going to get around three hundred sixty-six dollars into um, the processing and the pig, and I would say they probably got close to a hundred and pounds of meat. So you're looking at around two dollars to something a pound. Um, really not that bad at all because this meat, no, they, they know, we know exactly what we put in it. Um, we got to see it be raised from that little piglet up until um, a good age to head off to freezer camp. And before too long, we get our own freezer camp done. <laughs> we might not be taking all of them off to freezer camp. We might try to do one of them ourselves to start off with slowly. And eventually, who knows, if we have more time, we might be able to do all of the ones right here on Walker Farm, which on this one, five pigs at $200 a piece, $1,000 is what we would have saved in that one trip. Is it worth $1,000 to process out an entire pig? We'll have or to five see pigs? when it comes to curing and doing all that stuff. It's a, it's a lot more work than a deer. Um, and a cow's even more work with hanging it and aging it, things like that. But a pig is even more work. So when the Macs come down and visit in March, we're going to need to pick their brain. Well, we're also going to have hand hewn farm here, <laughs> That's true. which they they are professionals at doing it. I don't know. I might trust the Max more. So we'll be watching hand hewn farms um, practices and learn some from them. And hopefully that will go a long way in us using our own freezer camp. Um, it'll at least give us a good idea of how much work it is or how much time it is. If to, we're ready and what, what else we need. To be more ready. I think it's really just a time thing. I, I really don't think it's any more than that. I think it's having the time to actually do it. I mean, if you can get some sharp knives, if you can get the equipment, a good grinder, you could probably do it. But is, is it the time commitment that we want to take on? So we'll find out. Um, at least we'll have that option hopefully soon and be able to do it if the time's right and we have enough time. So as far as praying goes and catching up with the walkers, we always try to do um, some prayer requests. So if you guys have any, feel free to leave them down in the comments. But we have a local um, neighbor of ours that's actually developed into a pretty good race car driver. He's very young. Yeah, I think he does like the sprint cars or something. He does those small cars. And he's not very old. And he's like... I don't know, semi-pro or something. He's sponsored by Craftsman and Toyota and all sorts of stuff. But he had a really bad wreck last night at a race. He flipped his car and he's going through lots of surgery. He's got a spinal injury um, is what we understand. So please be in prayer for him and his family and give the doctors wisdom and just heal his body. Yes, it's the Persley family. And like I said, just a couple miles from here, a lot of their family uh, live close to us. So if you would be in prayer, we really do appreciate that. And we would love to pray um, for some of your requests if you guys leave them down below. So we want to thank you guys so much for following along. Hopefully you learned something today about um, pig processing, how much it costs, and some of the ins and outs of the freezer situation we have uh, here at Walker Farm. But we really do want to thank you guys for following along. We hope you guys have a great, great day and God bless.